Hey dudes, it's Mr. Post, and today we're going to look at uh, how to analyze a position versus time graph in physics. So where the unit we're covering right now is one-dimensional kinematics, or really just straight line motion. An object moving straight in a line and going back and forth in that line. So it's one-dimensional, pick an axis, we'll call it the x-axis, and objects moving away from a point and back towards that point. On our PT graph, which is a position versus time graph, so I'll just you know, write this out like this. We often call this a PT graph, or position versus time. Position is another way for us to say displacement. And you'll see it's measured in meters right here. So really, I'm going to draw it over here. This is a position, and that's measured in meters, also known as displacement. All right, that's another way to say position. On my x-axis, which is right here, and expressed down at the very bottom of the page here is time. And that's going to be measured in seconds. So when I say position versus time, I mean my y-axis is position or displacement, and my x-axis is time. You'll notice that uh, I have over here also, I have positive displacement, and that's going to be everywhere here and up. I have positive displacement, and over here I have negative displacement. Another way for me to say that would be positive is rightward displacement, and negative is less leftward displacement. So on this slide, you know, the one thing I do want to key in on here is where is my object moving rightward? You know, any object that's moving rightward is going to have what we call positive displacement. Now, anytime you have positive displacement doesn't necessarily always mean you are moving rightward. And you're going to see that as we go through this exercise here. All right, so this object is starting out right here, and it goes from here to right there. And you're going to notice something changes. The time changes. It goes from 5 seconds to 10 seconds. So right here, this is the 10 second mark. And at 10 seconds, my motion is going to change. All right, I'm going to enter this plateau right here. But before we get there, let's analyze what's happening here. Well, at 5 seconds, I had gone all the way over to this displacement. I'm going to call that around 30. Okay, that's roughly 30 meters. That's I'm just picking that point here. And at 10 seconds, I have a motion now that has left me 60 meters away from where I started. That is going to be 60 positive meters. You have been displaced because you've been displaced rightward. It's positive. So right here, this little zone is what I would call rightward motion. And specifically, it's constant velocity in the rightward direction. All right. Now, as we continue to analyze this, you're going to see, you know, there is more rightward motion on this graph. But, you know, I'm kind of going to go off the slide a little bit, and I'm not just going to do where is the object moving rightward. I do want to go through just the whole entire motion of this slide. You know, at 10 seconds, something happens. The object hits this plateau, and it, the question is really, what's happening during this plateau? Any plateau in a PT or position versus time graph represents something. And specific to that graph, something is not changing right here. And the thing that is not changing is not time, because time is changing. I went from 10 to 15 seconds. Time is changing. The thing that's not changing, just follow it over here to the axis, the y-axis. The thing that's not changing is my position. I have 60 as my position right there, and 60 meters is my position right there. And anytime I have a plateau on a position versus time graph, that means the object is at rest. Another way to say rest is that constant, all right, constant position. All right, now check this out here. After, you know, five seconds of resting here and doing nothing, just chilling out in place, my object is now going to start heading in a different direction. And I know this because look at my displacement. My displacement was originally 60 meters. Well, at this point, my displacement is just followed over here. My displacement is at 40 meters. At this point, my displacement is 20 meters. That means I am getting closer back to where I started. So if this is rightward motion, which takes me away from where I started, the only way for me to get back to where I started is going to be leftward motion. So right in this area right here, this is going to be leftward. And another way I can also say it is leftward motion, but it's really actually leftward constant velocity. And all you guys are awesome at this. You're going to know that when I say leftward motion, what I really mean is negative motion or negative velocity. Negative velocity meaning just leftward. And that velocity is going to continue right here. You're going to notice something here. 
Bam! Right here, guys. Check this out. What happens? You've crossed that center axis. You know, at 30 seconds, something special happens. At 30 seconds, you actually return to where you started at. And I'll prove it to you because you have no displacement. No displacement means you are back exactly where you started. Well, this person actually had went out 60 meters, rested, and now is heading back towards where they began. But they, they walk right past it. They walk right past that, and they continue leftward. They continue leftward for 40 meters. And I know that because the point at which this motion stops, followed over here to the x-axis, is negative 40 meters. So right now, at that point, this person is going to be displaced negative 40 meters, or 40 meters to the left. At that point of 40 seconds here, right? Now bear in mind, this negative 40 was gotten from this point over here. 40 represents the time, which is in seconds. Now at 40 seconds, something different happens. The object starts moving back closer to where it began. And for the next 15 seconds or so, the object is going to go rightward now. So right here, this is rightward motion again. And it's going to be rightward motion with constant velocity. And I'm going to call that positive velocity. And it's going to take us all the way back to where the object began. And now I know my object is returned home. How do I know? Where is your position right here? The position is, follow it all the way over here, your position is at zero meters. You're going to notice a similarity here. This line and this line both kind of have similar slopes. All right, they both have similar slopes in the, in, the, in the fashion that they're both looking like this. All right, anytime on a PT graph I have this kind of like you know graph looking line, I'm actually headed in the rightward direction. All right, that's a little hint. And anytime I have a graph that is actually going down like that, that means I have leftward motion. So just a little food for thought, guys, as we continue on here. Let's go to the next slide. One of the things I do want you to get on this is, you know, being able to use the units that are given to you on the slides. You know, for instance, uh, on the on the y-axis over here, you know, I, I do think you're by now you know this is position. Position is meters. It's a displacement. And over here on the x-axis, I have time, which is seconds. So this is time over here, measured in seconds. And I ask this question a lot of beginning physics people. You know, what does the slope all right, what does a slope of this line actually measure? And up until now, I feel like you know a lot of math students can, can do math and do slope, but when I say do it in a PT graph, it does become a little tricky. And I don't want you to lose your confidence here. Slope is nothing more than the change in Y over change in X. And we could also express that as Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And you've known that. You've learned that before. All I'm going to ask you to do right now is simply this. Instead of writing y, write down the unit of measurement for y. The unit of measurement for y is meters. And what is the unit of measurement of x? It's right here. It's seconds. So slope actually is going to give us a meters per second, which is another way of saying velocity. And we're going to work on this. We're going to you know, just look at this. And if I just said, what is the slope of this line right here? Well, the slope of this line is nothing more than the change in y or the change in x. And I'll pick two points on here. I get to pick any point. So just to make it easy, I'll pick this point, and I'll also pick that point. And let's figure this out here. Well, this is going to be our second point, and this is our first point. Well, y2 is going to have a value of 60. So instead of, let's take this formula and just draw it up here. Instead of y2, I'm going to write down 60 meters. And y1 is, right here, guys, 0. How about x2 and x1? Well, x2 is going to equal 10 seconds. And x1 is going to equal, obviously, 0 seconds. And the velocity is going to be 60 meters divided by 10 seconds, which is going to equal 6 meters per second. So the slope of a line is actually crazy valuable to us in the fact that on a position versus time graph only, it will give us the actual velocity that the object is moving during the period 
of that slope, which is in this case here. And if you plug the numbers in, you can do it for here, here, and here, and you would calculate the velocity at each section. A really, really powerful tool for us to use when interpreting a position versus time graph. Okay, guys, let's check this out. What's going on between 15 and 30 seconds? You know, so 15 seconds is going to be right there, and 30 seconds is right there in that point. And I want to calculate the velocity. We've already determined by looking at this that this is going to indicate a leftward moving object. I know that because I'm on the right side of my displacement. I've been displaced rightward. But now I'm coming back closer to where I began, which means I must be moving leftward. So this is definitely a leftward moving object at this point. Meaning, whatever I calculate for velocity, I know already in my head that it should be a negative calculation. Velocity is nothing more than the change in your displacement divided by the time it took to change it. And that's really what your definition of velocity is going to be. I could almost call it like d2 minus d1 over time. All right? The change in my displacement or displacement divided by time. On this graph, I could easily just say it's my change in y over change in x because y is displacement, which is up top here, and x is time. So either way you want to address it as change in y over change in x or just change in d over time, you can solve for the, the velocity between 15 and 30 seconds. So let's just plug this in here, guys. Here we go. Change in y. Well, let's just choose this point as the first point and this point over here as the second point. All right, at the second point, my y value is, let's go all the way across here, zero. My y value is going to be zero meters, and y1 was 60 meters. And going in between my time here is going to be, tracing it down, is 30 at the second point, 30 seconds, and my time at my first point is going to be 15 seconds. Let's crunch these numbers, guys. We end up having negative 60, which is really cool. I'm glad I got that number there. Negative 60 and 15 seconds. Negative 60 divided by 15 seconds is going to give us negative 4 meters per second. You know, so if you look at this and you're saying to yourself, that's a little weird, 0 minus negative 60, or 0 minus 60, rather. No, it's actually, it's going to work out. It's going to work out perfectly for you because we know this object is moving leftward. It has leftward velocity. We just proved it with that negative sign. This object is traveling at negative 4 meters per second, which means I have leftward velocity. And that's true. I am rightward originally. And now I'm coming back closer to where I began and must have been moving leftward. So using the slope and using the axes can give you so much information on a position versus time graph they become super duper helpful once you learn how to analyze a graph and express your motion using a graph all right guys in this slide i want to analyze the graph and i'm actually going to change the title up i just made a quick little change here i want you to find the velocity between 40 seconds and 50 seconds which represents the time period over here and actually let's make this even better let's just go all the way to the 55 seconds over here so between 40 and 55 seconds. Try to press pause and calculate the velocity. First thing I want you to do though, look at the line. Predict what the velocity is, is going to be. Is it positive or negative? And let that be a benchmark where you start. All right, guys, go to it. I'm going to solve it in a second. I'm looking at the change in y over change in x because I know the slope of a position versus time graph is going to give me velocity. So if the slope equals velocity, well, I'm going to use it. In this case, let's look at make our two points here. Our first point, this is point one, and let's make our second point right there at 55 seconds, point two. So let's do a change in y. Change in y means y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So change in y is going to be, I have negative 40 is going to be my first point, and zero is going to be my second point. So let's do zero minus negative 40 divided by, in this case, it's going to be x2, and x2 was 55 seconds, and x1 was going to be 40. So I'm going to write that right down below here. So what I end up having here is 0 minus negative 40, which ends up giving me a 40 value. 40 divided by 50 minus, 55 minus 40 is going to give me 15, and that value is going to be equal to
2.67 meters per second. And that actually kind of that kind of looks good. It's a positive. It's a positive velocity, 2.67 meters per second, and it does make sense. It's heading up in the positive direction. I'm moving rightward, even though I'm the leftward side of where I started. I do want to analyze a couple things here, guys. A couple of really critical things here. I want you to look at the slope of the line. And if you steep, gentle, mild, very low slope to no slope, I want you to key on this. The fastest place this object was moving was right in the beginning. And I want you to see on a PT graph, this means a steep slope. And you should be going, aha, I, I, I see that, I get that actually. Yeah, the steepest slope represents the fastest moving object. The most mild slope, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, the mild slope, gentle slope, 2.67. All right, this represents a slow moving object. A slow moving object is going to have a very, very low or shallow or not a steep slope. All right, my steep slope represents something that's moving fast. Right here, this is a moderate slope. All right. And a moderate slope simply moves means I'm moving at a moderate velocity. Neither fast nor slow, but it's just a moderate velocity. And the last thing I want to key in on here, guys, is kind of right here. Where I have no slope, all right, no slope on a PT graph means simply this, no velocity. If steep means fastest, medium is in the medium, in the middle, a low slope means very slow. Well, just kind of picture this. You know, if this is a PT graph and my slope is just barely anything, I am moving very, very slow. And on a PT graph, when my slope is actually right straight, it just means I'm not moving at all. No slope means no velocity.